All right, so next speaker, uh, Marty Greenstein from uh, Events Pros Group. Uh, Marty's a top consultant and a trade show showstopper. Uh, he's organized the Grumman picnics, which I used to go to as a kid with my dad, and the SD Water picnics, uh, just to name a few. Uh, he does national consulting, public speaking, uh, show decor, including balloon decorating and close-up magic. And uh, Marty will give us some advice on how to set up a trade show group for maximum results. Thank you. Good morning again, everybody. You know, selling anywhere, trade show, face-to-face, -face, takes imagination. Getting your imagination working, getting it working among other people so that you're listening to what they're saying. You know, God gave you two ears, two eyes, two nostrils, and one mouth. Unfortunately, I talk too much. I don't listen as much as I should. But as part of what I have learned in the art of the sale, no matter where it is, is that you have to listen. I have to tell you that the use of your mind is the most important thing that there is. Convincing other people that what you have to offer is what they need begins with questions. If you ask the right questions, you find out where their pain is. You find out where their needs are. Yes, we can all talk all day about what we do, all right? She gives money, he makes t-shirts, he, he, he's a, a giver of law. I mean, there are all sorts of wonderful things in this world that people do. Now, if we were at a trade show, now it's a little bit different because people can kind of see what we do, but they may, pay, they may pass us by because they don't think they need us. We think everybody needs us, but they don't necessarily think so. So you need to think about how do you stop them? How do you get them, how do you get that six seconds to become a, a welcome mat rather than, let me, uh, that's not what I want. There are ways to do that and I'll approach that in a few minutes. But the first, the first and most important thing that you have to consider is if you make the investment of six, seven, eight, hundred, a thousand, twelve hundred, three thousand to get a booth of a whatever size, is it going to look great? Let's hope so. Are you going to have the time the temper and the ability to truly follow those leads up. Unfortunately, and we know this, and you're a business guy, you know, 85% of the people who take booths don't follow up 85% of the leads they've gotten. That's bad. And they waste half of the time that they're in the booth. My concept is a little different. First of all, if you're not gonna follow it up, put the money in the bank, go away for a vacation with your wife for a weekend, it's, a lot, it's going to be a lot more rewarding. Walk the show. Grab some people's cars that you might use. All right? Now you're in the booth. Your booth, let's assume, is lit. It looks great. Maybe you have a showstopper. What's a showstopper? Well, it could be somebody out there doing magic. You're talking about the magic of the law, the magic of finding money, the magic of insurance, all right? A guy who sells insurance doesn't sell insurance. You don't sell insurance. Well, you sell a dollar to future delivery when they're most needed, all right? So those are the things. You, 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 we all are selling peace of mind, but nobody wants to spend 20 minutes in your booth finding out what you do, all right? So how do we get around that? How do we get somebody in the booth and dispatch them quickly so we can get someone else, all right? Very simple. You say, you have your 30 second elevated speech, and you say, you know what? There is no way in this world that in three minutes or 30 seconds, I can tell you all that I want to tell you about what I do and find out what your needs are and how they match. So what I'd like to do, I want five minutes on the telephone in a week or so. All I want you to do, give me your card, and agree to take my call. In five minutes on the phone, I'll have some pointed questions. You'll have some questions. If the synergy exists, we go on. If it doesn't, you, we both invested five minutes and didn't lose the precious time of business. People respond to that. You're saying to them, I know you don't want to waste your time. The Hop Hop Industrial Association is going to have a trade show. There was just one at the Coliseum. Thousands of people milling around, hundreds of booths. 
Which one do you stop at? Oh, there's four people in that booth. I ain't going in. Years ago in the Hopwog Industrial Association's trade show, I encouraged them to have, I called them environments, they called them pavilions, groupings. If you're in the insurance business, you should be with other insurance people. If you're in banking or whatever, if you're together, when I get to your booth, you're busy, I'll go to his. When I come out of his booth, I can go back to yours. The chances of somebody walking the show twice, very remote. If they, if they pass you the first time, they're probably gonna pass you the second time. So that means back to the showstopper. How do you get them to stop? Well, there are a number of ways. Way number one, do not sit on a chair. Oh, just, just take this picture. You're sitting on a chair, you're on your cell phone, yeah. there's a table, who's stopping? Absolutely nobody. So the first rule of trade showology 101, you don't sit. Rule two, you have as many people in your booth as you can bring that can tell the story and look for that five minute phone conversation as you can afford to bring. You cannot afford to do a booth by yourself. You gotta go to the bathroom, you booth unattended, that means you have your own business. You're sitting behind a table, you're putting up a barrier. That's not the way to do it. So you step into the aisle, greet people, hello, I have three words. If those three words don't capture your imagination, thank you for stopping. What are those three words? Shake hands, all I want to do is peace of mind. If they, now, they, they hear it a million times a day, but all of a sudden you're saying something that people are saying, it makes sense. You know what, I don't think that we can do this in a quick minute. Give me your card, I promise to call you, not this week, because this week you're going to be processing everything. I'll call you next week. All I want you to do is, here's my card, take my call. Five minutes, we'll decide whether we're going to go further. And then after that, the next step will be a 15-minute visit where I, it's just an information query. I'm going to find out what you need and how we can satisfy those needs. Then we find out there's no symmetry. We're gone. My idea of Trade Showology 101 is to present a wonderful vision that you are going to be good for them. That they are exactly what you need as a great client. Sy the synergy is there. If it's not, we've all experienced that. All right, this, this fellow over here, he makes t-shirts, he embroiders, he makes, he does all kinds of ad specialties. All right, if I need ad specialties, I'm gonna to go to a professional that knows what he's talking about. A five-minute conversation, this is not our first time talking, a five-minute conversation with him tells me that if I want to give something to somebody, that he's going to direct me, all right? I'm not a pen tchotchke guy, all right? Um, I rarely have a pen with me with anybody's name on it, even my own, all right? If I'm going to give somebody something, I'm going to give them something that they're going to hold on to, not dump on a desk. So if I'm giving them a fountain pen, I'm giving them a fountain pen. If you're gonna give something to somebody, give them something, whether it's intelligence, whether it's a, 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 an ad specialty thing, give them something that they're gonna keep. Because what you're giving them represents who you are. Putting a candy dish in your, in your booth, I'm sorry, it's stupid. All right, who's coming in? The Schnorrers. <laughs> you all know what Shinaras are, the people who take a handful of candy, all right? He's very smart. He had, when he has his booth, he has three giveaways. The cheap pen to get rid of the, the Shinara. <laughs> he's, got a good, he's got a really nice gift to give to people who are a decent prospect, and a really nice gift for somebody that, that he really feels is going to manifest into a great client. Boothsmanship is very important. How many people are in your booth? How are they dressed? Ladies? Lady? <laughs> nice shoes, no spikes. You're just not gonna make the day. You're not gonna last. No sitting, no eating. When I'm working, a, like, I'm, I'm going to be doing show stopping for Bob at the HIA, I will not have my cell phone with me that day. It'll be at home, if somebody calls, my office will answer. Dr. Scholl's in your shoes, all right? I don't, it, it, you know, and you cut it to the right size. The point that, you know what some people do? Some people order the carpeting. Others will put a piece of carpeting down where they're standing on the outside of the booth. Then somebody trips and they forget about it. 
point that I'm making, give me a second, the point that I'm making is that everything that happens in and around and in front of your booth matters. You have six seconds to capture their imagination. So what are some of the things? We can all buy that $30,000 thing that comes in a box like this that takes three hours to set up and three hours to break down and then it never really fits back in the box correctly. All right? Or you can pay someone else to bring it and do it. But if you didn't light your booth, if you didn't light it, up lighting, down lighting, side lighting, if you didn't light it, ah, not that. Now, in many instances, like at the HIA show there at the college, you can't use helium balloons. Now, I've decorated that room with more than 3,000 balloons at a number of years, but nitrogen or air put them on frames. That room looked gorgeous, but no balloon went up to the ceiling. One balloon went up to the ceiling that somebody brought in a helium balloon, and you gotta be careful about this, all right? That, the, the, the sensors didn't know it was a balloon, they thought it was smoke. Pfft. The whole building had to be empty. So you have to be careful about what you do in your booth. Find out the rules of the road. When can you come in? How can you pull out? When does the show end? My God, the worst thing you can do if the show ends at three is to pack up at two. What does it say about you? All right, it's just, you don't do it. I was, I, I never broke a booth until the show was over. And then another 15 or 20 minutes, people didn't get a chance. Let me catch them on the way out. All right, it's all a matter of thinking about who you are, what you have to present, and why the hell should anyone stop? If you have those wheels that spin, brrr, it catches someone's ear. After it catches their ear, it catches their eye. All right? That's all you want to do is get them to pause. When I do magic in front of, as a showstopper, I always have a little, remember that skin the cat game where you had to make the thing go over the, I have one of those on my table. I have my own little table. And so whether it's a card trick or, or a coin trick, every trick that I do, every little illusion that I create speaks to the people whose bill booth I'm fronting. All right? It, th that they make choices. I may take out a deck of cards and say, using them is the best choice. Do you make good choices? Do you play cards? Sure. Do you, what's the best card in the deck? Mace. Okay. So if I took out a deck of cards at this point, all right, and as a magician, you should always have a deck of cards, all right? And we'll shuffle the cards, all right? Which word do you like better, now or stop? Stop. So you want me to stop, say now. Stop. Before I finish the deck. <laughs> See, now, that's very important. I went quicker than he did. I wanted that laugh. I wanted that pit of piece of humor. I wanted everybody to feel good. Now, let's do it right. Now. Now. Take this card at random. I don't know what you picked. Pick it out. Show it to everybody. I don't want to see it. Ace of spades. All right. Put the ace of spades back. <laughs> All right. I got a better idea. You shuffle the deck. Would that make it fair if I let him shuffle the deck? Absolutely. All right. So you shuffle the deck, and we'll be very fair this time. See, the magic of sharing, I use magic in, in my selling. I use magic in my talking. Because when you do that, you're gonna convince people that there really is magic in this world. All right, you ready? Here we go. No way this is gonna happen again, except that you're good. Yeah, no. Show them the ace of spades. <laughs> Worked. <laughs> so what am I saying? <laughs> what? <laughs> I don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> the point that I'm making is simple. I captured your imagination, I involved you in what I was doing, and I hopefully made a friend. Sure. All right? People believe in magic, they really do. And even though they don't think they need it, they don't think it, they all want it, they all love it, but oh no, I'm an adult. Are you kidding, Siegfried and Roy is $400 a ticket. <laughs> and you don't even get to see Roy all the time. <laughs> let me go to, let, let, let me spin this the other way for a moment. What do you do when a Shinora comes in your booth. Everybody knows what a Shinora is? They're looking for those free giveaways. They take all the paper, they pick it up, they roll it up, that's what they keep warm in the winter. They put it in the fireplace. There are others that read all of your material, read every page, and they're looking for key phrases that they can use to, to market their products and services. How do you dispatch the people that come in to sell you? I feel, I feel that what he did is what we'd all like to do, 
but with all due respect, it's the wrong thing to do. Yeah, I know, but it's no, no, it feels good. Sometimes what feels good isn't good. What I, what I recommend is very similar. You want to dispatch them, but you want somebody leaving your booth with a smile. Somebody that leaves that think they had a win. So I take the card and I say, you know what? That sounds kind of interesting. Will you do me a favor, take my card, call me in three weeks. I want to follow up all the, all the people who want to do business you know, on my end. Call me in three weeks and we'll have a conversation. Now I have somebody in and out of my booth in, in, in under a minute and they're leaving with a smile. They're going to say nice things about, hey, that guy's got a, he's, he's nice. Not he's a pain in the, hmm? Or he's a kvetch. Everybody knows what a kvetch is, right? You want people coming into your booth and smiling. You want them listening to what you have to say. You want them leaving happy. Leaving that there's going to be a future to the fact. They made the, the, an investment of one to two or three minutes, and that investment may pay off. If you spoke to Mark, all right, and, and in 30 seconds you know that this guy can help you if you have well, I don't think there's anything in this world called a problem. There are opportunities to succeed. All right? And you know what? I heard that when I was a very young salesman. I was 21 years old. And, and I heard it at, at, at a seminar. It's a long story, so I won't go into it. But the, 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 the thought was, there is no such thing as a problem. There are merely opportunities to succeed. So I've been out solving my opportunities for the whole of my life. But I never, ever saw anything as a problem. Right. Mark, Mark tells people and trains them to understand that. That it's not a problem. A, a, a trade show booth that isn't properly manned, that's a problem. An opportunity to succeed should have brought people. And don't bring some Schmendrick. You know what a Schmendrick is? Don't bring a Schmendrick, somebody that has no, that can't do anything but stand there. All right. Bring your best and brightest and put them in, the, put them in your booth. Remember that during the course of your, of, your, of your tenure in the booth, someone has to go potty. Someone needs to eat. Someone should be walking the floor to see who else is out there picking up cards from people that may wind up being you know, a prospect for you. Well, you can't do all of those things and be a single proprietor in a booth. Right? You have to go to the bathroom, now you're a loser. If you have to eat, you're a loser. If you're in your booth eating or on the phone or texting, you're a loser. Yeah. This is the time that you have spent anywhere from $600 to $6,000 for. And the only thing you should be doing is either writing an order, writing a phone number, or getting somebody interested enough to talk to you again. Yep. Mm -hmm. All right? Okay. Any questions? I'll, I'll give you one of the best ones I used. It's a showstopper. It's exactly what I'm talking about. Something that either audibly or visually, in that case, audibly and visually, drew people into the booth. They want to know what that thing is doing. I mentioned before about most shows put the table in the front, and most amateurs think that's where it's supposed to be. Your first move is get that table to the back of the booth. If they, if they give you chairs, you may want to leave one folded up in the side in case somebody comes in that needs to sit down because they don't feel well. Get rid of the other one. All right. Now, whether you place the table in the straight back or on the side or on the corner, kind of depends on what else you're doing in the booth. Now, at Bob's booth, he's going to have, the, I think he has 30 feet of booths with, with, a, with Larry and, and, and a couple of other people. So we're going to design that booth so that it makes sense. There are going to be balloons at the two corners of the 30 feet, beautiful sculpture of balloons, not helium, all right, and a big sign that indicates the fact that they are a team. When somebody speaks to Larry and he smells that they may need video or website, he's going to say part of our team. When somebody's at Bob's Corner and, and, and he's, he, you know, he's going to recommend them there because they're a team. They're, they're, they're a communications team. As a, as a man of the mind, when do people begin to sell? At birth. At birth, they're communicating. Now, every mommy, and now, now it's in, it's, you know, she's a mommy. Every mommy knows the basic 12 cries. I'm hungry, I'm tired, I'm dirty, I want attention, I want to be picked up, I want to put, they know them all. The daddies, we know the dirty and they woke me up when I was trying to sleep or do something more fun, all right? We know the three. 
but that's commu they communicate. There are, the, there are those people who believe that the communication starts before you're born. The baby's hungry, mommy gets a signal. That's why, why women, unfortunately, it's not just the baby that pours out there, it's all the food that they give the baby. But that tells us something. Communication is the, is the heart blood of life. And certainly when you're selling, communication is the heart blood of every sale. Where does that sale begin? In the minute you're in, in the view. No, in your ears, in your eyes. Sometimes in your nose. All right? A good salesman in a very well thought out event, event booth has two or three or four questions that they're going to ask anybody that comes into the booth that will position them to get the right answer, to get the pain. Again, we're only selling that five minute conversation. Sometimes they want a little more. They ask those three or four questions, all right? A business opportunity is going to be presented to you next week. Do you have the financial wherewithal to do that? Or do you know where to get it? That's a good question for you, all right? Um, as you grow your business, all right, have you had the opportunity to discuss the growth of that business with an accountant or an attorney to make sure that you're make, making the right, you're taking in a partner? Are you, do you have a buy and sell agreement? All these things, it's communication. Thank you so much for your time. It was a pleasure visiting with you guys.